Hey, hi everyone. Today we are back with another video on digital system design. Now this video is going to be different from the playlist which is regularly going on on the system design separately. This video is on the Kinesis and Kafka comparison. Uh, but this video's part is taken from the system design case study that we are doing already as a separate playlist. In the last video on system design, we discussed about why we are using Kafka and why not Kinesis. So if you are following our system design uh, playlist where we are disc discussing on the restaurant on the Google platform. So we are discussing about a lot of different things over there, a lot of technologies, a lot of under the hood application components. So in one of the last videos, we discussed about uh, Kafka and Kinesis in the last video that we will be taking a short video and creating a short video for all of you just to see the comparison on Kafka and Kinesis. So this video is about that. So in this video, we will touch base on the basic concepts of Kafka and Kinesis. Uh, we will see what all actually and where all you can utilize that and how internally their components are structured. Briefly, we will have a high level view of these two systems. And at the same time, uh, we will look into some of the areas, let's say performance, cost or scalability aspect, uh, then which one is winner and which one you can use. So this will be short introduction videos of comparison of these two engines. We will have upcoming videos for different comparison engines for let's say Kafka versus SQS plus SNS or let's say any other queuing system or publishing system. So how they get compared and uh, fits into the, or uh, we have to choose which one to use when. So we are creating another content for that uh, topic as well. So let's discuss on the Kinesis and Kafka on um, three to four aspects today. Now, first thing is, we know Kinesis and Kafka both are basically a streaming pipeline where they are working on the Kafka and publishing subscription platform. For example, if you have uh, uh, different data sources coming in from one platform, or let's say if I draw here multiple platforms like platform one, then platform two, then this platform three. So these are the three platforms which are actually ingesting the data. So for example, it comes here. And this also, let's say not this one, but all these three components send you the data to this platform. Okay. So this is a kind of a, you can say a Kafka cluster where you have the data coming in from all the data sources. The data sources can be anything from based on your business aspect. For example, the data source one, then we will pick it and name it as data source two. Then we will pick it up and name it data source three. Now this data sources when we are talking about, so these data sources can be of different types. For example, data source one can be sending files Data source two can be sending some kind of events which are coming in uh, to data source two, or let's say which are getting generated inside the application components. Data source three can be something like uh, regular events coming in from the users, IoT systems, or anything else. Then there can be other data sources related to log systems. For example, you have different application components in your application. They all are producing the logs. Now you want to send those logs to a central streaming pipeline. So you can consider data source for those systems as well, which they are sending to Kafka. Now, all these systems are sending the logs into the Kafka and uh, similarly, Kafka has internally different components or let's say different uh, mechanisms to store their data. And at the same time, there are different consumers who are actually listening to these data. Now, whenever we send the data, uh, so basically we uh, when we see Kafka is a publisher and subscriber system. So it means these are the data sources which are actually publishing the data into the Kafka and these are the systems who are actually consuming. So when we send some data, we, that goes into a certain topic. Topic is nothing but you can say a pipe kind of thing where you are actually sending data which is getting read by on the other side by the consumer. Similarly, if let's say you are trying to send, uh, if you are talking about an e-commerce application, so if you are trying to place an order, so all those order related events like order creation, order cancellation, uh, order updation or whatever. 
so those will go into the order even topic for example so that is one pipe actually where you are sending all that data now the other thing is uh, there are different uh, mechanisms which we need to follow while we are designing our kafka cluster or kafka pipeline or let's say data streaming pipeline when we are sending data into a data streaming pipeline we need to take care of multiple things so let me list out all those things first so that we understand that concept better so the first thing is uh, performance then we have scalability then we have resiliency okay and then we have maybe consistency probably not that much important but let's say consider it and some things related to cost then security so anything like something like these kind of quality attributes we can consider so when we talk of these terms for example now if you have a very high scale application so you are sending the data into kafka topics so how would you make sure that in case of disaster and let's say the first point is disaster uh in case of any bad situation how you can recover the data let's say in in, in bad situations in case of disasters so how would you like to back up whether it is a real time whether it is a uh backup at restore kind of mechanisms or whatever so you need to think about that scenario as well primarily so kafka handles that pretty well because when we send the data into one topic so let's say this is my kafka cluster inside that we have multiple brokers so let me break that kafka cluster into here into a bigger example so let's say i have this is the kafka cluster and i have many brokers inside it i have broker 1 i have broker 2 broker 3 broker 4 and all that now i'm sending the data into the topic so order creation topic so now that data is coming inside let's say that topic in case of failures i need to recover my data and i need to be sure that my data will not be lost so brokers are nothing but different nodes you can assume who are actually working collaboratively inside that cluster so when you send the data to topic so that topic will have a replication factor when we say replication factor which means it will actually asynchronously replicate the data to other brokers as well as a copy for example topic 1 will have a copy here and similarly topic 1 will have a copy here and if its replication factor is let's say 2 or 3 or more so it will have more copies so based on that so it will actually when topic receives that data let's say order topic receives the data so it will actually replicate the data to these topics uh, uh, as well in these brokers so that's the beauty of uh, kafka which is actually resiliency is pretty highly maintained <coughs> it's not that it's not maintained in kinesis so we will look at in kinesis also how it is maintained but i am talking from the perspective of uh, kafka how it is maintained internally uh performance as we all know so kafka is very high performance like you can have 30000 or let's say 50000 calls per second and it will actually seamlessly work on your architecture so we will look into the scalable streaming architectures as well so if you have a use case where you want to send let's say um 30 to 50 gear let's say more than those events more than that also events per second so we can look into that use case also in a separate video so that is about the scalability part so performance like it's already high scalability as we know it's already or as we have discussed it's high resiliency i have explained that how it is maintained and how it is beneficial to us as well then the consistency it's maintained on the let's say you are sending the data into a topic and multiple consumers are trying to listen to it so let's say i'm sending the data of all these data sources into the order topic now order topic will have multiple i would say consumers for example from the order you want to run your machine learning model from the order you want to create your analytics table where you want to store the data into analytics table and analyze it later on or probably generate some reports or anything like that and uh, Uh, probably generate something else for some other use cases so let's say these are different plethora of use cases you may have 
So in that case, what you can have is you can have multiple consumers here who are actually listening to that topic. Now consumer one is here, consumer two comes here, and then consumer three comes here. So all those are different consumer groups, I would say. So let me put it like that. So all those are different consumers. So all these consumers are having their own responsibilities. So CS1 is let's say for machine learning, CS2 is for analytics, CS3 is for let's say monitoring or whatever it can be. So all these consumers are actually listening to the data and at the same time they can actually listen. For example, you have five messages in the topic and consumer one has read three of them. It's not that consumer two will not be able to read, read first three. So consumer two will follow its own log consumer 3 will follow, follow its own log so that's where the consistency matters based on the consumer groups that we have defined on the Kafka layer so that's about the uh, I would say subscription side how it is subscribed and how it is received so you see many many data sources are publishing the data into the cluster and at the same time many consumers are there on the right hand side which are actually subscribing to that data okay now when they are subscribing the data they can actually subscribe to any like when let's say CS2 is subscribing the data. Now the data is residing in any of these three brokers for topic one. So when they subscribe the data, the data can be sent from any of the broker. So it's not like topic one will, uh, broker one will always send the data or broker two will send and all that. Of course, there will be a one primary mass primary broker and other one will be let's say secondary brokers. In case of any disaster, let's say primary broker goes down. So then the secondary broker will actually decide by the voting algorithm and goes uh, see who will actually be the uh, primary node now. So that is actually internally on the system design algorithm. Then the security, it's uh, as we know, it's a shift level mod left model where uh, something we have to define initially based on our requirement. And then we have to define the in the architecture as well. So now we have discussed about Kafka. Let's discuss about Kinesis how Kinesis works internally and how that differs uh, from Kafka. Now let's take the same image how it's internally arranged. Now inside uh, when we say Kinesis we have shards rather than topics we have shards who are actually taking the data in and, and at the same time we have different basically consumer types as well. So in this case the consumers can be your fire hose or let's say your lambda or let's say any other ECS or EC2 or any of the service which we have HTTP service. So we can consumer configure the direct consumers as well. So similarly applies for this process as well. Now Kafka and Kinesis are very high performance systems. So it's not like Kafka is only the high performance and if you need high performance, you need only, only use Kafka. It's not like that way. If you compare these two systems, both these systems are very highly scalable. And at the same time, they are actually capable of handling a lot of uh, traffic or let's say high traffic in terms of very scalable load. Uh, when it comes to cost, so basically I would say from my terms, performance is almost the same. Scalability probably a bit different like probably Kafka is a bit better here so performance wise I would rate them equal let me rate them here scalability wise Kafka is winner now we will look into the resiliency part now whereas uh, Kafka was actually replicating the data to multiple brokers similarly Kinesis also does the same so it replicates the data to multiple VM machines internally and first thing Kinesis is a AWS service so which is a AWS proprietary service so if you want to use Kinesis so we have to use AWS cloud whereas Kafka you can deploy it on premises or any of the cloud system as well so moving ahead so when the replication happens in case of Kinesis so it basically replicates to the internally configured VM machines so that configuration uh, it's not customizable. So let's say if as a user you set up a Kinesis uh, system, so it's not easy to configure the replication factor here if we say in case of Kinesis. Whereas it's easy in case of uh, 
Kafka. So it's it's in your own hands how many brokers you want, how much replication factor you want, and all that. So that's a better point in case of Kafka, and that way I feel resiliency is a bit better in case of Kafka. Okay. So now moving to the next point, consistency is almost equal. So there is no challenge there. Then other part is cost. Now cost is very important thing. Now Kinesis comes with two models. It does, comes with server and comes with serverless. So and Kafka comes with a server installation where an on-premise or any of the VM machines or any of the related uh, machines wherever you want to install it. Now in this case, uh, installing with Kafka may be a bit complex sometimes. Uh, and it may be time taking and at the same time setting up a Kinesis cluster will be a bit easier. Now the cost factor if you have very low scale or let's say not low scale but uh, let's say the traffic is not huge you are expecting um, like 1000-2000 requests a second or let's say more less than that only. Uh, so I think Kinesis would be a better option because that will actually cost you less. But whereas if you have very high requests, high number of requests, and if you compare the cost in case of the Kafka cluster and the Kinesis setup, so then Kafka may come out a winner if for very high scale traffic. So the cost may come higher. It will not come higher, but you can check based on your requirements, how much data you're sending, what is the payload, how many fan outs you are doing from the Kinesis and all that. So based on that, Kafka may come as winner for very high scale, but overall Kinesis is winner in most of the cases. Security is mostly governed in most of the, case, most of the uh, systems like Kinesis and Kafka both are pretty secured and the setups are also pretty easy to do as well in that area. So next is configurability, which is better to configure. So security also equal then we say configurability. Now here Kinesis is winner because when we set up the Kafka cluster, we need so much of configurations. We need uh, server setup and we need a lot of different parameters to do the setups and all that. Whereas in case of Kinesis, it's very easy to set up the cluster. We have just we need to just few do few clicks or let, probably let's say write some IAC scripts and those setups are done on the AWS. So there Kinesis is a bit better in that area. So this is a short comparison on how these two systems work on different areas and comparisons of them on different quality attributes. So based on that you can get an idea that Kafka is better in which case, Kafka Kinesis is better in which case. It's, uh, it's not like Kafka is always better and Kinesis is always better. Either of them are better in either of the cases. So it's not so they owe, they have their own use cases, they have their own problem statements based on which they are actually better and probably not better. So it's up to you to decide which one is better and which one is not. So in the next video, so we will discuss about Kafka and SQS plus SNS combination, which one is better, uh, latency, throughput and all that stuff we will discuss on that as well. So if you like our content, please subscribe the channel or like the video and please comment below for any of your suggestions that will help us in producing more great content for you guys. Thank you and keep on watching the channel, keep on subscribing and keep on liking the videos. Thank you. Bye.